It's time for our Ask the Doctor segment. You send us the questions, and we get to ask the doctor for answers right here on air. Dr. Caitlin Merkin, a surgeon with Mercy Bariatric and General Surgery, as here with us as always. It's great to see you. Sure. I think we hit our nerve last week when you and I got together. We were talking about soda. Is there the right soda to drink? Is there too much soda to drink? We got a question here uh, that uh, we didn't get a touch on, so we'll go ahead and bring it to you now. We're talking about diet versus regular sodas. At least that was last week. This week, Amy writing in and says she needs to drink more water, but she has one zero soda a day, so she wants to know how that differs from the regular and the diet sodas. Okay, great question, Amy. So regular soda typically contains added sugar in it. Okay, yeah. Diet and zero sodas, depending on the brand, usually um, entail some sort of artificial sweetener in them. It kind of depends on the brand how much uh, is in each of them. Um, there's not a clear consensus as to is diet or zero soda better for you. Um, and so, you know, I think we, we always kind of focus on added sugar. So regular soda tends to be worse for you. However, there's more data coming out that zero and diet aren't great for you either. Um, I think uh, the big thing in this is just kind of monitoring how much you're taking in and limiting how much you got. A lot of the advices we have are like, well, it's in moderation, it'll be okay. And maybe it's not actually okay. Uh, the parade of questions here continue with drinks. We have this one from Charlotte, and she's asking us, you know, what about a drinks like the sparkling waters on the shelves? Yeah, so sparkling water, water is good for you. Water is hydration. Um, sparkling water has carbonation in it. So some benefits of that is that it may make you feel more full. Um, on the contrary side of that, it may make you feel a little bloated. Um, there's no real documented negative effects to carbonated or sparkling water at this time. So I would say, you know, increase your hydration. That's great. Yeah, it makes uh, kind of a bland drink a little bit more fun to enjoy. Uh, Karen wants to know why doctors' offices and hospitals aren't requiring us to wear masks as patients, she asks, isn't that where the sick people go? So, um, great question. There's a lot of reason that people go to hospitals and doctor's offices. You may be welcoming a, a new baby, you may be getting your heart checked, you may be having some sort of orthopedic procedure. So not everybody that goes to the hospital is sick. If you are experiencing respiratory symptoms, we do recommend that you wear a mask to protect those around you. And at most hospitals and doctor's offices, they still offer masks at the entryway for that reason. And you, of course, have that option to wear one for yourself. So you can't maybe control the person next to you, but you yourself can at least bring one within your back pocket. Absolutely. Uh, we saw this study uh, recently that patients are putting down wrong information. So the researchers here blaming the length and the repetitive nature uh, for those inaccuracies. So I guess I'll ask a question. Is there a reason the forms you have to fill out when you go to the doctor's office are so long? So I think this is a fair critique. Um, with the advent of the electronic medical record, there's an intent to capture all of the information that we possibly can about patients. Um, there is some redundancy built into the medical system as a whole, and that's to help prevent mistakes or to catch them when they're made. Um, I certainly know uh, when I am interviewing a patient, I ask all of these same questions again, even if it's there in the medical record, because sometimes wrong information is propagated, or I find something that maybe they forgot when they were filling out those forms. So I totally understand that it can be um, arduous. Um, however, when your doctor asks you important questions, there is a reason for it. They're trying to help find out the diagnosis and take good care of you. All right, well, Dr. Kayla Merkin, as always, thank you so much for joining us. And if you have a question for the doctor, we'll get to work answering those questions. We'll bring in Dr. Merkin again. You can, of course, just send us those questions to camov.com slash ask the doctor.